Reap. Can you hear it? Welcome to Relay. Where's my relay yeah. folder? I well, don't have a relay folder. Yesterday, the gameplay seemed so far away, but after Gamescom, I'm pleased to say that I believe in yesterday. Suddenly, shivers screaming in my ears, it hurts. Success is hanging over hurts, and Sunjammer came so suddenly. Why did it have to stop? Citizen Con is not nearly soon enough. I'm done with this shit. Here we go. Wow. What? What? Why is my... Are you quiet is or it something? Is just Eris? Is that... I'm quiet? Okay, I'm, I'm cranking, cranking my volume, but... Hello? Hello? Yeah, my cam is crappy. It's just Skype, okay? I can't... I can't do anything about it. How's that? No, you're Ooh. not turning... Don't turn Jesus. that. You fool. No, turn turn up an OBS. What you doing? What you doing, boyo? Okay. There. Get up there, Vince. There oh. there Gain the staging. Levels, the levels are at the same place, damn it. I changed nothing God, from I yesterday. Oh man. Oh my gosh. Ugh. I Amateurs. Changed. Vince is like, what are you doing to my audio setup? <laughs> you ruined it. You ruined it. Okay. Better. Hello. Question. Better. Let's, let's see if this Hello. is better. Uh, <laughs> I do look this crappy in real life. Uh, again, I, I've had to say this just about every week. Uh, because of Skype, this is how my camera looks right now. There's no way for me to get around it right now. And we're just waiting for Discord to implement decent uh, video. So. Yeah. Soon. Soon. This whoa, 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 whoa. I thought we were I thought we were waiting for FOIP. FOIP? Well uh, that'll uh, be the next IP. Wow. That'll be the next thing. Yeah. Once once FOIP happens, we're actually just gonna start doing the podcast in game and you can all sit there in game and watch us do it in game. Nothing can go wrong there. Nothing can go wrong. Yeah. Uh let's you know what? Fine, let's start there. Let's talk about FOIP. Uh, Let's talk about FOIP. What did you guys what think? What is it? FOIP is face over IP, which is like voice over IP, but with a lamer acronym. Um, <laughs> or a better acronym. Maybe. I don't know. Uh, Where did this prejudice about acronyms come in, Eris? I hate acronyms. There's too many of them. Go work for the military. Everything is an acronym. Ugh. Yep. And, and then everyone sits there and yells acronyms at you, and eventually you're like, I understood it and the in your four minute long sentence. I hate you. Um, let's talk about FOIP. Yeah, let's move to FOIP. Yeah, sure. FOIP. Yeah, FOIP. Um, Just jump halfway through last night. Yeah. We're going to jump halfway through because we started talking about FOIP. So let's, let's talk about what everyone thinks about FOIP. Uh, Who goes first? Yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll go start? go for it. Go for it, success. Talk sure. to us about FOIP. You don't need it right now. It's really cool. Like it, you know, this, this is a good feature to have, but you don't need it yet. Like you need other stuff first. <laughs> you sound so. Right? You sound so dis. D uh, I despair. like it, but they they like focus the whole presentation around it. Uh, we. <laughs> We, they could have just shown us a video and that leave it, but you don't need it yet. It's not a big You're deal. Also, it's not even going to be in 3.0, so why did they show... Don't get me started. Someone else someone else go. Sunshammer, what did you think of FOIP? I think we need it, and we need it now. I think it's critical. <laughs> the game is literally unplayable without it. I have to completely disagree with my learned colleague up there on the... Uh, oh, he's not even in the top right anymore because we're in a line. Oh, mm. okay. Um, I thought it was nice. It was a nice surprise. Uh, I w wasn't something we were expecting. They they have hinted about it in the past, and we've seen tech demos in the past and using other systems. Um, and they've always talked about how they wanted this kind of diegetic VoIP, so that and this is something I think that would get people to use it. You know, um, so I mean, essentially, you're getting three things for the price of one. You're getting diegetic VoIP, so it 
you've got um, presumably attenuation based on location. You know, so you can't hear people standing around corners. You can't hear people in different rooms. Um, it reacts to the distance that you are. Um, you've got the facial animation system, so you can drive this these cool heads that they've developed um, using the technology that came from presumably Three Lateral and uh, the other company that's involved in that. Um, and and then um, you've got the the head tracking. So all these people that have been screaming for support for um, the the head tracking solutions uh, or VR. Well, we're getting one in potentially three point one, uh, and it comes for free. And all you need is your webcam. You don't need little things on the side of your head. Uh, so I, you know, I, I, yeah, I, I have to agree with uh, Vince. It's not something we need now, but. If we're getting it, great. It's because it looks really cool, uh, and it allows us to do all these other things. But we're not it's, getting it now. Wow, well, sorry, we're getting it three point one potentially. Yeah, yeah. Shiver. Uh, pretty much the same. It, it is absolutely pure fluff. Um, uh, I would be heavily against it, like heavily against it, um, if it okay, weren't for the fact on. that it looks again like again it. What? Again it. Against. Against oh, okay. okay, wow. I would be heavily you, against you, that's it. A stretch. It you missed a few letters there. Yeah, yeah. It's a Simpsons reference. Oh. Um, I, I would be so against it if it weren't for the fact that it is being sorted out by a third party company. So CIG don't have to divert too many, if any, resources on it. Right. One engineer. Yeah. yeah. For an afternoon. Or Maybe. Something. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Something. Frank. Include hash. Include. SDK faceware, done. That's it. Nothing else. I'm sure. Do you think some of it comes out of them wanting people to feel as integrated into the game as soon as possible? Like, it's not going to be 3.0, but hopefully by 3.1, the AI subsumption will be more integrated as well. And they'll be able to say, not only is subsumption integrated, and you can have conversations with these NPCs, but you can have conversations with your friends in game and you can just live in the game now. And you can like, is it, is it that kind of like, they want people to feel immersed more sooner rather than later? Well, yeah. But... Last MSC pointed out that, that there's, it's just going to have a load of female avatars when they're at least all talking, you know, hello, darling. Hello, darling. Agon. <laughs> Dude, the good. reverse of Melissa. <laughs> <laughs> they, yeah, yeah, you're probably right. Like that is something they're. That, that is probably part of why they chose to show it now. I mean, maybe also just because like, you know they had it more or less ready and it's yeah. ready to show off. But, I mean, they, you know, they do that. You know, they showed that off. You know, like look how immersed you can get in the game, and they also have you know the whole um, referral system and all that stuff, wh which I mentioned because. It, they they got their priorities kind of in the wrong order. Like they're trying to show off this stuff, the stuff before the game is really all that playable. You can't really get immersed in a game if that doesn't work yet. No matter what you tack onto it and how much you say, like oh, it's available to play now. Tell all your friends and stuff. It's in the end, it does more harm than good. I think for the public perception because they're trying to sell it as a game that's totally ready with one. Uh, you know, 2.6.3 isn't really that ready, and 3.0, we'll, we don't know if it's that ready because they showed too ambitious of a demo yesterday. It, they didn't focus on showing that the game is robust and works and instead showed a bunch of future tech like the like the FOIP stuff and the Idris. It, the, I, they, they, they got a lot of stuff, does, done, I think. Does anyone demo. wonder if they actually had more to show, like... And they might have shown more if they didn't have like half an hour worth of crashing and having to redo everything to show the actual impressive thing that they wanted to show, which was the Idris. No, no. Okay. Uh, another I don't question. Think so, what? Another question. When we're talking about how Foip is gonna, you know, you're gonna have people running around, you know, big gruff voiced women running around talking. Do you think that? the FOIP thing might actually persuade more people to play the same um, gender? gender? Mm -hmm. Could do. Maybe. I, I, I don't care, really. I, mm. 
David, you usually play as a woman in a game. Would yes. you be playing as a man now? Well, I'm going to be playing as a man now because I'm going to be playing me in as Relay. Because that's going to be... My, my main character is going to be me well, being me of Relay. Um, and after he's died a few times, it'll be his great, 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 great grandson. Yeah. So but... I'll be like week two. <laughs> Shut up. <laughs> oh, that's only if I try to fly. Okay, so, Foyp, I'm I'm kind of feeling that no one's really terribly interested in it. It's like oh, it's cool. It's cool. I'm glad it's gonna be yeah. there. It's very yeah. very cool. You know, positional audio, love that. But don't care yet. You know, yeah. that's uh, that's an extra thing. That's a, that's a stretch goal kind of thing, right? Too soon to care is what Vince is saying. Yeah, no, yeah. I, I I agree. Um, let's talk the six hundred I. Did uh, did anyone pick one up? And in chat, did any of you pick one up? I I might have picked. We'll one have to up. wait a bit for chat. Yeah, but, but I, I I in the interim I picked one up. Damn. I uh, sticking with my Connie Phoenix. I I got rid of Carrick for life. I got rid of a prospector. I those too. Got rid of my prospector, my um, Hulby, and two of my Endeavor uh, modules. Ah, uh, yeah. And grabbed it. Because that's going to give me something to actually want to earn. I'm going to have to earn my Endeavor uh, modules once the Endeavor's in the game. Which, yeah. Mm -hmm. I, I, I did think about it. I, I did look at it, but the um, the price for the UK is just silly yeah yeah because yeah. we get that thrown on top of it so your 435 dollar explorer module was over 500 dollars and then i hadn't even converted it into pounds which would be ridiculous so i had to look at it because i thought about maybe swapping out my carrick but i don't know i mean what do people think about the price point because my imagination or, or the way i kind of categorize it is i thought this was origins um because Shiver and I saw it when we did the studio tour. Mm -hmm. um, so we saw the concept art there. So when when we saw it, it was like, I think they said it was kind of like Origins Connie. But it's like twice as expensive as a Connie. It's it's more expensive than a Carrick. Um, I mean, it, it, it and kind it's a of three figures... person, three cruise ship, and it has a billiard yeah. table. So that was a straight out. <laughs> I mean, that's, that's kind of what Origin does, right? If you look at the... 300i the 315p those they're kind of just fancier auroras right much more expensive and fancier auroras this is their much more expensive and fancier connie it's you're i, I think, think it's, the 300 series is quite a bit better than the aurora but also their pricing is really different because they're uh they're part of the original yeah is this 300i part of the original series or were they added yep. on later stretch no, yes. yeah i think everything what i got Everything they started with is priced much lower than the ships they release now. Um, probably because they're rewarding early backers, sorta. But yeah, I do agree that the pricing on this is a bit out there. It's real um, nice. It's real nice, but it's very pretty. pretty and, uh, I mean, fast carts, right? It's kind of like a Phoenix competitor, three fifty versus four hundred, right? So it's it's only fifty dollars more than a Phoenix, which is kind of what it's supposed to compete mm -hmm. against. That's actually um, a very good point, yeah. Now, what do you guys think about the... We've seen this trust week... Trust Pascal. Yeah, always trust Pascal. Uh, we've we've seen this week a hell of a lot of the new Cutlass. Uh, people on the game's floor, show floor, Thanks. playing around with it. Uh, apparently, it's going to be going up in price once it hits... Once it launches in 3.0. What do you guys think of that? Makes sense. Oh, my Cutlass I don't care. Okay, okay. let's go back to some of the other things that happened this week before the presentation. Because um, there were there were actually a few... Uh, hmm? There was stuff? Wow, okay. There were four... I thought, I thought the big ban happened. I thought life began at Gamescom. <laughs> <laughs> there were four interviews. Uh, two of them were really good. One with Aaron and one with Chris. The one with Aaron is, is pretty good. Um... Where was it? If I look at... Um, so they're talking about... And I think there was a bit of discussion about this on the sub this week as well. But it's something that 
should probably be talked about a lot more and won't be because so much hype happened on on Friday that everyone's going to forget about it. But they talked about um, so 3.0 is going to have procedural moons. Uh, it's going to have the birth of some survival mechanics, oxygen, stamina, etc. Uh, and the question was, what else is planned for survival, food, and water? And Aaron's answer was that it won't be in 3.0, but eventually, as they go forward, players will be as immersed as possible. You'll need to eat food. If you don't, your life will go down. If you go without food, you won't run as well. You'll lose health. Same with water. Uh, if you don't shower, NPCs will react differently to you. Um, what are your thoughts on all that? Because that's, I mean, this is something that they talked about a long time ago, actually, in one of the... Uh, the um, monthly, like the the round tables, town hall. one of the town, town halls, hall. yeah. But uh, they haven't talked about this for a while. So, what do you think about them adding food as necessary? Uh, let's start with the success. Okay. Um, th yeah, I, I remember them discussing this. Uh, you know, they were they, at the time they said they were you know evaluating how to balance you know that making people do stuff, you know, in a role-playing sense for immersion and all that to, you know, get people to eat and drink and shower and stuff. I didn't think they were actually going to go that route, though. Um, that sounds pretty extreme, and I'm pretty surprised to hear that. I I, I, I have a hard time imagining... Um, I mean, I guess they, they're going to work, like, buffs of some kind, but, like, I didn't think Star Citizen was that kind of game to really have... Buffs, Those yeah. kind of modifiers to your character, because your character is kind of like the. I don't know. There, I have a lot. Of, it raises a lot of questions for me. Uh, it's a little puzzling, but I'll, I'll wait and see what they actually have in mind. But it's, it's kind of weird to hear. Sunshine. Kind of weird. Yeah, we we've kind of had some mixed messages over the years about this. Um, the initial system that they talked about was exactly as Vince described there. They were, you would have to eat every couple of days and i think that's what aaron was saying on the interview you would have to drink every couple of days you would have to shower once a week or whatever it was it, they didn't want it to be too invasive um they you know something so it's not like uh, a daisy where you're having to actively monitor your your uh, stats and top yourself up with food and water constantly um it was just something to that you had to do kind of keep it ticking over a kind of nod in the general direction of survival um and that's what they originally came out with and they had the idea of it would give you a slight non-critical non-gameplay critical buff so it would give you something nice um to sort of encourage you but it wouldn't be a game changer as they might like to say these days um but then I think in the town hall that you were referring to, there was a slight change in that and it actually became a more interesting system for me because I think the scenario that um, Chris gave was if you crashed on a planet, um, you would have to find a source of food, a source of water yeah. um, in order to survive. So you, would, you wouldn't necessarily have to go around actually drinking and, and, and eating, but you would have to have almost like it's some resource management so it'd be like well i i know this this food source um exists and that'll keep me alive for five days so i've got five days i can just ignore eating and it will there'll be some hand wavy them in the background that will make me eat those resources and then when they're done then i'm back at risk of starving again and that became slightly more interesting to me because if you were stuck on a planet for a wee bit of, uh, for a wee while then these sort of things would be like all right i need to find water it gave you a few initial yeah. missions if, if to I do remember, for yourself if objectives. i remember what it was talking about back then was kind of the idea that like if your ship is stocked with food and water then you don't have yeah. to manually eat it it's there and the game assumes oh you've eaten it but you do have to take on food and water when you resupply mm -hmm. right yeah and then if you crap so i that's how i'd be okay with the system uh, yes vince like, is that more something you'd be okay with? Because I'm kind of with you. Like, if it's if it's something more like Daisy, where you have to eat every 20 minutes because you're hungry every 20 minutes of gameplay that you play, that that sucks, right? It still sounds like a needless system being tacked onto a game that already has lots and lots of systems pertaining to your character and equipment and ship and all that stuff. 
it's all about the implementation. So, yeah. I mean, maybe I'm, I'm not uh, inherently against the idea. It's just the more systems you have in place, the harder it is to make them all work together in a fun way. Yeah. So uh, we'll see if it actually adds value to the gameplay. We'll see. I, I, I guess one way to look at it is that sort of second system, if that's what they decide to go with, is a bit like wear and tear for your crew, in addition to having wear and tear for ships and items, which they've also talked about. So, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, what right, if they right made it a system that was, if, if you were in a ship, it was an optional system. So, you know, if you decided to opt out of the system, it would be like automatic. Your food is stocked, your water is stocked. It, it's just taken care of. You don't get any buffs. That is just a gold buffs. Yeah, but if you decide to do it manually, you've actually got to go and feed and, you know, treat your carrots like a Tamagotchi, but you also get certain buffs for that. Yeah. Whereas if you are on a survival planet, you have to engage with the system. I, I kind of like yeah. that. I, I like, honestly, the idea of you not having to go and eat in your ship, but, okay, I'm I'm traveling from Earth to Terra. I've got all of my waypoints mapped out. Everything's, you know... I've just hit go, and it's all safe. I'm not even going to likely encounter a pirate. I'm going to go play some cards, eat some food, do something to kill time, as it were. Sure. I, I mean, what else are we going to use those canteen uh, animations for? Yeah. Uh, can I just stop? I mean, Eris, you're not having a heart attack or anything like that. We don't have to stop the screen. <laughs> I, I might you be. Taste who knows? You just keep clutching your chest. I'm I don't know. I just, I just take the beer it that I'm drinking. Can, can you smell? Can you smell burning toast? <laughs> uh, no, toast is too far away. I wouldn't smell if you were. You're fine fire. then. You're fine. Um, I do actually like the idea. Now that I think about it, uh, of it only affecting NPCs. That would be good. Uh, yeah. Like, just NPC management, like you know, one mm -hmm. one of many ways to help control morale and improve performance <laughs> of NPCs. So Star the player doesn't have to do anything menial, but. If you have NPCs on board, you know, you have to be concerned with paying them and keeping them happy by providing various forms of entertainment and food and drink and stuff, which in turn would impact, you know, you need to store that stuff on in your yeah. cargo. So and that would be some extra overhead. I think I could get behind that. That sounds all right. They've also that said cool. that care like we won't have statistics, right? Like Player characters yeah, don't but have NPCs statistics, will. but NPCs yeah. will. So maybe food, you buy better food and it will actually buff the happiness or, you know, desire to work of your NPCs. Sims in space, baby. Sims in space. Sims in Sims space. In space. Sims in space. Woo! Anyway, I... I space Sims. Yeah. I thought that was a pretty, oh pretty important thing of that. Pretty important <laughs> thing to, uh, to take from that, that interview. Um, I mean... Uh, they talked about uh, the Bengal being a kilometer long still, and then there's also a a station in Squadron 42 now that's 12 kilometers long. That's just Shubin. They've just doubled it. <laughs> yeah, okay. It got F42. Well, I mean, if you think about it, the Arena Commander maps right now are 20 kilometers. So this yeah. one station okay. is more than half the size of an Arena Commander map. It's pretty big. Yeah, it's pretty big. It's That's insane. Dangerous. Would that be big enough to hold something like a retribution inside of it, do you think? I don't know. Parts mm. alongside, but it's shooting, so it's mining, so it's going to be surrounded by asteroids and things like that. So, mm. so for 3.0, they listed a few things as, like, careers that you'll be able to do in 3.0. Uh, cargo running, which is buying, selling cargo. Um, miss missions will be created for that. Uh, stealing other people's cargo, selling it. Bounty hunting, find and retrieve missions, or I don't know if this is all in one sentence or not, but I think mining is going to be in 3.0. I think find and retrieve missions might be something they're working for 3.0 as well. I'm not sure, but uh, mining. mining is 3.1. Yeah, sorry, sorry. I'm seeing. I'm, yeah. I'm screwing up. 3.1. Uh, <clears throat> what of those it's things are attack. you guys looking forward to? Sorry, it's it's the heart attack. It's messing with my brain. What was the list again? <laughs> Cargo, uh, bounty hunting, piracy, uh, eventually find and retrieve, uh, bounty hunting, and mining. F, none of the above. I'm uh, an explorer. Uh, cargo, so I'm looking cargo forward stuff. to 
I'd be cool with cargo stuff. I just want to see how all that stuff works and ties into the economy. I mean, we've done enough like bounty hunting and fetch quests and stuff like that. So cargo, yeah. I think, is where where it starts all of this. So I'm looking forward to that. Personally, I, I, I can't wait to just screw other people's missions up. I'm <laughs> that guy. I'm sorry. I really you am. Are I, there will be times I will be that guy. There's I'm sorry in advance. Terrible, <laughs> terrible person, Shiver. Um, okay, where are we? Let's talk about, and let's go back to show and tell, because uh, we've seen it basically this yesterday for the first time just about ever. Uh, what do you all think of the Idris? And the Idris versus Idris, and the things landing on the Idris, and just, <laughs> just the Idris. Uh, yeah, go ahead, Sunshammer. Well, I was going to say the I, I was so glad when they did the second um, Idris battle because the one thing I wanted to see was um, the Gladius taking off and leaving the Idris, and we didn't get to see that in the first battle. And then when they switched to the second battle, and we were sitting there, it was just hovering in the hangar, and I was just like, yes, go, baby, go. And it just went whoosh, and I was like, yeah, that's fine. I'm happy. I'm done. <laughs> didn't care about very the rest. Rogers, wasn't it? Oh, it was just it was yeah. Seeing them because we'd we'd obviously seen them land before, uh, and hopefully when they actually do the landings for real, the ramp won't extend. It will just come down as a flap because um, that looked kind of weird having the full ramp extended yeah. uh, on the address. But I'm guessing that's just an animation thing they haven't done yet. Um, yeah, so seeing the seeing the uh, the Gladius land in the address, uh, but more importantly for me, taking off from the address, that was great. Um, I think the the Idris battle. One of the things we saw, we got a feel for, it was, was just the sheer size internally. It's like a warren in there, a maze. Um, when they were running to the turrets, and you know, or, or even when they when they when um, they they first boarded after Melissa's slight incident with the overpowered ramp. <laughs> uh, when they when they first went in and they were trying to get up to the bridge. And then when they were running to the turrets, I mean, that place is just massive. It's absolutely huge. Uh, so seeing that floating around in game, I mean, I think they said it was they'd only got it working a week ago. So, you know, the actual battle was a wee bit kind of, you know, time to kill was ridiculously short. It blew up kind of easily it's, and quickly. I'd but that, that didn't bother me. fully implemented. Yeah. It's, what, it's, no armor, no shields, no systems on it. It's just... Got, probably just got a health bar for the purpose of the demo. So. One of the things <laughs> that I did see was uh, someone saying that one of the reasons it might have blown up so quickly is if you look at the front of it, there's a there's a still at one point of this giant hole where it got hit by the railgun right, rail right in the Super, bow of the yeah. ship, right? So I'm kind of wondering, you know... Through I mean, the hangar doors. I mean, keep in mind, that is what the railgun is for. It's for blowing up Idris's. And it hit. So, uh, Vince, what's what, what are your thoughts on the Idris? Uh, I wanted to see more of the Idris. Uh, it felt like they were more focused on like the drama uh, and and actually the combat. Like I wasn't really that engaged in the combat itself. I just wanted to see more of the Idris. And yeah, like that hole through the bow of it. Like I wanted to see how that stuff works. Like how you can actually blow a hole in the damn thing. Like that's incredible. And it was just kind of a thing in the background that you could have easily missed, right? The, the, again, I'm just hating on the presentation, uh, <laughs> not the actual progress that they're showing. But I, I wanted to see more of that stuff. I, like when, when they first brought the Idris down, I was like, oh, holy shit, it's happening. And I, I was still impressed, but they, they could have taken better advantage of you know how, how big of a deal it is that they're showing the idris working and flying around and actually like it's there it's real it's here and it exists it's a thing it exists it, yeah. it's could be it's an real. atv special post game uh, atv special i really sure hope, hope so. i really Looking hope they that. do some atv specials on yeah on basically all of it because the idris especially is, the canteen yes oh yeah definitely um do you guys think that seeing it spoiled anything for you for Squadron 42? I know that that's been... I didn't really see that much of it, you know? It, it was it was so kind of casual. It was just like, yeah, I've got an address. It lands. It takes off. It kills. Well, yeah, 
I think buggies. the segment would, where uh, was it not not Melissa but the other person uh, was running up from Glenn. like they ran up. Yeah, it was Glenn. Yeah, ran up the ramp and to you know the the bridge. Yeah, I think that was in the secondary camera. Yeah, it took I think the primary camera was something else happening, and it's like you're running through the whole Idris, and like that that's what they're not focusing again. Okay, I'll, I'll stop. I'll stop. I'll stop. I'm, I I will I'm, admit I'm I actually no one's no one's touched on that. I I freaked out on and it's so small I and mean, you know me i i really appreciate those little bit of qols they add in and that was they had a freaking lift moving inside the ship that a person was using a ship was going down inside this in a ship in movement in combat in space that's phenomenal it is jesus it, that's it, like it, a technological step forward that i haven't seen in a multiplayer game the Think of like, I mean, Mass Effect's elevators. Mass Effect well, is all one. on one bloody plane because they can't even deal with. Oh, you went up in an elevator. It has to like, ah, yeah. I'm, Are you I'm, talking about Mass Effect One, the only Mass Effect game that there is? No, there's Mass Effect Two. Hey man, Mass yeah, Effect easy. Two. Easy, whoa. Yeah, there's oh, Mass oh, Effect Two. No, no. There's Mass one and no, two. Oh, did, uh, apparently, uh, Star Wars Disco. Galaxies had that as well. Apparently, it, with the things and the lifts and in the the, ship, that was the, pretty cool. To the know. elevators in Mass Effect One were awesome. You know, yeah, that was like all it had. So Jahan did fool. I don't know how to pronounce that. I'm sorry. Uh, says that in today's bar citizen, I guess in uh, in Frankfurt, Brian Chambers told them that the demo was only worked on for six weeks and that the Idris had been modeled but not completely implemented by then. So, well, okay. Hmm. I think they could have, uh, like, I mean, right before the presentation started, Chris said that it was like their most ambitious or their most moving parts in any presentation. Which immediately, when he said that, I knew that we were in for a heck of an evening. But uh, <laughs> I, I, I don't know. I think they could have made a less bombastic demo that was more more effective in showing what they had. So I, I mean, I don't know. Like, they only worked on it for six weeks. Okay. And they only got the, but, what was it Chris said, was it one week ago they only got the uh, Idris's, the capital ship combat, a week ago, yeah. working. So uh, It, um, it kind of makes me wonder what they would have shown if they hadn't gotten that working. Yeah, what, what the Idris would have done. Maybe they would have just gotten in the Idris and done a tour of it instead. <laughs> well, we would have got what the press got, which was the first half, up until the point where the Idris landed and took off. Unless you mean they wouldn't even have got that. Um. Because that second part where the Idris versus Idris combat, that was the, the press never saw that. I believe yeah. that, that, that was just for us. That's that's our present. Um, okay, so we saw. We didn't see 3.0. We we act well. No, we saw a lot of limited 3.0 from the game floor. And honestly, some of the stuff that they were doing, uh, I I have to give huge props to the streamers that were invited to uh, to Meyer. Sergeant Campbell and DJ Knight, um, they fucked shit up in a great way. Oh, uh, yeah. Like, I'm sorry, but fitting the Nox into the Ursa rover, brilliant. <laughs> Just fucking brilliant. Thank you for doing yeah. that, because guess what? It bugged the shit out, but it also fit and worked and could be driven away in... Great. Um, yeah. Falling from space... And release having and oh. uh, the release and catch that yeah. brings that brings me to mind of Battlefield 1942 and knife fights on the wings of airplanes. Yeah, you know it's this that same kind of wonderment. Like, it's the it's the what can we do? We do these things not because they're easy, but because they're hard. Like Remember, just doing crazy shit for the sake of doing crazy shit. I love it. Yeah, yeah. Uh, like one of the one of the times when I think you and I were actually playing. Uh, two point, whatever, and someone's sh like someone's ship blew up and was spinning out of control, and we tried to get it into the back of a freelancer. Do you remember yeah, that? Yeah, I remember think that? so. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And we failed because I can't fly, but <laughs> it's a tough maneuver for anyone. It is, but like that that Set sort of stuff down. is exciting, exciting to see. I think personally, what did you guys think of it's just? A good time. The gameplay that we saw, not not at the presentation, but from the show floor. Shiver. 
it was pretty cool. I mean, none of us were expecting anything from 3.0. We were all like, it's it's going to be 2.6.3. Don't get your hopes up. And, and they 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 completely dashed our hopes. And they, how dare they show off this bit of 3.0 that was working and changing from the planet to the space? It was disgustingly good. How did they get those smoke generators and that mirror tech in place in such short notice? I'll never know. <laughs> yeah, I, I was really happy to see 3.0. I mean, limited, whatever, fine. That, that's okay. Like, I, I understand. Like, they have other stuff they got to work on so they can disable the Q drive and everything. But love it. Fantastic. Having people pay, play 3.0 for real, great. I think it works pretty well overall, too. Really not bad. Some hitches here and there, and it crashed a few times. Okay, yeah, it's not even ready for Evocati yet. But yeah. Very happy with that aspect of Gamescom. Catch it, catch it. Oh, you're good. That was a good pour. Well, kind of. <laughs> yeah, I have to agree with Vince. I, I thought the, the stuff they did on the games floor was, was pretty good. Um, uh, thank they, you, they thank you Fastcart. Most... Fastcart has posted the, the clips of that in chat, so thanks, Fastcart. Everyone go check out the clips of that because it's amazing. Sorry. Go ahead. It's awesome, that. yeah. Uh, no, that's what I was saying. I think they made the most of what they had. They, they weren't given a lot of toys to play with. Um, but, you know, they toured every vehicle. They showed us everything. Um, they went around the three uh, outposts that were there. Let us have a look at those. Um, they made up games. You know, they did all the death races that Mark kept cheating on by changing the rules every five minutes. <laughs> um, they played cat and mouse. Um, I, I really liked the bit actually where they sent, uh, I think it was DJ Knight off towards the sun and Meyer off away from the sun and they just basically zoomed away on the, on the planet and um, Meyer was just going across flat desert that was completely featureless for minutes, whereas um, DJ Knight was going to fly through all the canyons and he was doing lots of low-level flying and that looked superb. You know, it looked really nice. It looked more, um, I, I know I'm going to trigger some people with the atmospheric flight, um, but it looked more like a, you know, um, a flight simulator than it did a space game at that point because he was flying in the Gladius, which is very much like a modern jet in its look and feel. Um, and uh, yeah, it just looked superb. I, I loved that. Um, yeah. I think catch and release or release and catch was the pinnacle. And I, I, I want to... I, I want to make a quick note because I saw a bunch of people in uh, actually in the Relay Discord and in a bunch of other discords and over on Reddit and stuff saying that uh, that it was crashing every 15 minutes. The servers were nope. crashing no, no, every no, no, 15 no, 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 minutes. No, 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 no. And no, 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 no. Um, no. That, <laughs> it's kind they, of funny. They, they said this over and over in the stream. Yeah, they, they did it say it over over in the stream. It was not crashing. And it's uh, it was limited to 15 minutes so that they could get through the two hour long line of people that were, you know, waiting to try it at all times and that's also why they limited things like the q drive it's also why they uh you know spawned a whole bunch of ships right near where everyone spawned so that everyone could load in get in a ship and try it for 15 minutes and then they have to move on it was it's it's to make sure that you know everyone gets a chance to play the game and star citizen is about flying the ship so we're not going to see the exact same thing in 3.0 when we get our hands on it. There's not going to be probably a location sitting on, on the moon with a whole bunch of, you know, ships for everyone to try out and grab. Uh, that's not going to be there, but uh, it was there for the, for the show because it's for the show. Um, yeah. Planetary playground knots confirmed. Um, but I think we saw a couple of examples where they um, they didn't reset when they went on the the quote unquote private server. So there was I think on the first day they jumped on that one early, so they actually had like a double session. So at the, I think it's at the beginning of the third hour on the first day they had like a thirty minute session because they yeah. were there for fifteen minutes just the streamers, and then the um, the next batch of, of players um, you know, joined up attendees joined in they got another 15 minutes with them so that was 30 minutes and then I, I seem to remember there was there was one where it was during I think it was during the Aaron Roberts interview where Sergeant Gamble was just in the private server for a full hour and he actually nearly it might be in Gamble might be in DJ Knight but one of them they were on for an hour and and they basically got down to almost no oxygen left in their suit Nice. And so they tested that mechanic out, but it, you know, so again, that was it. That server was up for a full hour. Admittedly, no one was doing anything in it. They were just standing in it or running around. And 
Yeah, but so they, they didn't have to reset it every 15 minutes. It was there. They were doing that purely to reset everything so that um, people, as you say, had had ships and guns available to them when they, they first loaded in. Yeah. Uh, um, so what else did you guys notice from the, uh, the presentation itself? Uh, anything else that, you know, reached out and grabbed you, Shiver? Oh, the Miles Eckgar. Oh, sorry. Oh, I, yeah, I, I loads, and I, I looked at all the small little details, like dynamic lights. You, you saw on the uh, Aquila Bridge when the red lights light up, and it, it actually lit up the correctly, as if it was actually a real light source, and it's doing all all of that sort of thing in real time, stupidly quickly, and there weren't any. Um, uh, frame rate drops, it didn't seem to be taxed in the system, it was stupid little things like that, quality of life things that don't really add to gameplay, but add so much to the environment when you're in a game, that I, I flipping loved that, all those tiny little details whoever did that <laughs> Sunjammer? Well, I, like I was going to say, is uh, the upgrade to Miles Eckhart um, long overdue, I think, um, and and not many people have probably noticed, um, but he's now holding a glass, an actual glass rather than some tin cup that he was previously, um, and there was an ice cube in it, so that was important. I felt long overdue. Uh, super, apparently, super important, Foundry yeah. Forty Two have been working on a long time on a proper glass shader to make this uh, glass look like... Oh, we've even got it on screen. That's fantastic. Of course there I you go. Look at that. Look at that. Man. That is amazing. That we, is, we, before we are, then... We've gone high-tech here. I can play stuff <laughs> when you talk about it sometimes. sometimes. See, what we don't know is that's actually uh, a cyclone tumbler. <laughs> cyclone tumbler. Uh, yeah, the, the only thing Jay that I was disappointed about that is that there's no liquid physics in it, it seems. The... Um, the, the the ice cube has been physicalized, so that's good, but the liquid hasn't, so that's not quite so good. Jay Liard the, the, mentions uh, that uh, that his face and jacket were reworked, and actually, yes. if you go on Reddit right now, one of the uh, top Reddit threads is uh, an album of comparison pictures of the 2016 demo versus this year's demo, and I think it is actually important to go look at those, because the amount yeah. of improvements are actually insane. Looking at the planets last year, and I remember being stunned at the procedural moons last year and now looking at it it looks like this this you know one texture empty nothing and then uh, yeah super super impressed uh vince uh y yeah like the other said it's all about the little things in the presentation like the little improvements quality of life the npcs which were relatively little family like they were kind of in the background uh, it's all that stuff to me that really adds up that shows like, wow, there's a lot of progress that's gone on. And yeah, like that, that comparison with Miles at card and the grand market and all that stuff, like yeah. how different they are now versus last year. I mean, yeah. Okay. They showed the same, um, Levski landing zone that they did last year. And this, but like it, that area, like within the Le Levski landing zone and like the whole, uh, area around it, as Chris said, demo, they had improved it substantially everything just everything looks like substantially better than last year yeah and one of the things I've, I've actually got it on the screen right now showing because it it amazes me you look at the idris battle and it's this like epic space battle and you look at you know walking around and talking with eckhart and it's this you know a very very good looking and kind of personal game and then you go into like this this derelict caterpillar and the lighting and everything, like, this is the horror that could be conveyed <laughs> through this lighting and, and this implement. Like, it's... I, I have a feeling that, maybe not immediately, but down the road, we're going to be freaked the fuck out at times. Like, straight up. Well, just go and watch the A Reclaimer video. Yeah. Yeah. <sighs> that doesn't um, give you an Aliens vibe. Nothing will. Yeah. I... I uh, yeah. 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 Uh, actually, you know what? Bila Q says something in chat, and we're going to get to questions in just a moment. Uh, exclamation mark, question mark in chat to get to the question document. Uh, 
give us your questions there. We're going to get to them shortly. But BLQ has something that I did want to talk about, uh, talking about the script that they force the devs to act out um, during the during the presentation. And one, <clears throat> it wasn't as bad as PAX Australia. Uh, Serpentine. Because nothing is as bad as PAX Australia, and I actually think they made a few mentions to PAX Australia making fun of it. Um, <laughs> but one of the things that I found really important and why I think that they needed a script was they wanted to show off the FOIP. And whether or not that they should have been showing off FOIP now, whether or not it's something they that, that is really needed... To show off FOIP, you almost have to go with kind of a more RP-ish feel of let's talk to each other as if we were talking to each other as characters, right? Because that's what you're that's what they're trying to convey as possible with FOIP, in my mind. So I think the script worked. It wasn't overbearing to me. But yeah. Yeah, it it was okay. cheesy, plain and simple, but You've got in my they they doing a presentation to customers to the world. They they've got to demonstrate uh, an example of how gameplay can happen or would happen in their vision. And it, 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 at the end of the day, it, it, they know what's going on. So by day four, day five, oh no, there come the fucking ships again. You know, it, <laughs> they're not actors. They are QA testers, so yeah. they don't have to do this. It's, uh, it, it's shit cheesy, but it's very much appreciated, and, and I adore Melissa. I, I, I will agree with Fastcart that it was slightly annoying how sometimes the the uh, the players were talking over Chris. Uh, that was more of an audio levels issue. Chris should have been higher than that. Anyway, I'm sure Vince well, yeah, I don't. on that. Well, I, I don't. I don't think. <laughs> I, I think they had. I think they just couldn't hear Chris, or some couldn't hear Chris. Like, like I think that was the yeah, issue. the ones in the basement had trouble. Yeah. I think hearing Chris. It was okay for oh, Glenn because yeah. he was sitting yeah. on the other side of the stage. Um, but uh, yeah, I think for the guys in the basement, there was. I don't think they communicate. I don't know how they had that set up, but they, they didn't seem to be communicating very easily. They were possibly communicating to one person who would then shout at the team. Yeah. You know? No, I. Uh, I thought it was. I thought that was actually just about perfect. Um, it wasn't overbearing. There wasn't too much of it. It was still there for the people that like that, but it also, it wasn't, it wasn't like cheesy announcer yelling at things. It wasn't, you know, serpentine pattern, you know, it wasn't, it wasn't too tactical. It wasn't, it was, I was okay with it. Yeah. Tactical. Uh, yeah, oh, I, 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 thought it was, I thought it was fine too. Um, Apparently, apparently, it was also 104 degrees down in the basement. Oh, ouch. So, uh, 700 Fahrenheit. Fahrenheit or Celsius? <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, I, yeah, no. Despite, I thought it was real bad. Despite but... the one crash that there was, and it was, it was, let's admit, it was kind of a bad crash that the planet disappeared. That was a bit of a problem. Um, but despite that, I actually think that that was one of the better run CIG presentations we've had yet. I don't. I... Do, can you think of a better one? Last year. Last year. Last yeah. year was awesome. Really? Last it year was like, yeah. Just, yeah. Okay. This had well, too you many had a freelancer parts. spinning as you were going down in a lift. You know, yeah. It was, uh, yeah. It was, it was, it yeah. was, last year's was tight, but then they had a lot more time to work on it and it was a lot more, yeah, uh, a lot more solid foundation that they you, were working on. Uh, do you feel though that's just because most of us backers are now this is like the second or third time they've shown off 3.0, so we're like, yeah, it's 3.0, we know it's amazing, we want to play it, but we can't. So yeah, do you think it's just like a, a general wear down of seeing 3.0 and lack of being able to play it at this stage for a lot of people? With I don't know, with my opinion with regards to the stream, uh, the presentation at. I don't think so. I'm I'm very excited about 3.0. I do feel like it's very close, and I don't really feel you know burnt out on it or anything. But no, I just well, think burnt out watching it. Watching it? Well, no. actually, no. My my complaint is that we didn't see enough of 3.0. Instead, we saw 
uh, you know, features that are in 3.1 and not really exploring like the consequences, well, any of the cargo or the consequences of the inventory system or the oxygen system, stuff like that. So really, I'd say I want to see, not even just play, I want to see more of 3.0. Yeah, and obviously they, they introduced subsumption for the first time. We haven't seen the AI before, and they kind of skimmed past that. We got to see one person go and fix something. But I thought uh, it was important to note that they were in the weapons place buying the railgun the first time, right? And yeah. then as they were leaving that room, an NPC walked in, and the customer service lady at the front did her standard greeting of, you know, whatever it was she said. The second time they went in, that person didn't walk back. Like, they are on their own schedule, and I liked that. And the fact that that Absolutely. person didn't walk in again, that wasn't scripted. It wasn't pre-scripted or anything. That's just they were on their schedule. And the second time, they ran through everything, everything faster, so that guy wasn't around. Yeah, it was the same with the workman. They, yeah. uh, I think they must have taken longer in, in the press demos, so the workman was at the little coffee stop doing yeah. his repairs whereas when they went through it first of all he wasn't there and as chris was talking about it he actually walked past you yeah and then went I, along and did that, it, started doing his repairs that to me is hugely important it shows that the ai even if it's not 100 percent implemented yet it's it's there partially and it looks good okay uh i am going to move us to questions now so again if you have any questions exclamation mark question mark find the question block blah 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 um so uh, let's see. <laughs> Fastcart asks, who else is looking forward to all the FOIP-based porn Star Citizen will soon provide? I don't know if it's actually Fastcart that asked that, but... Yeah, that that's a Fastcart question. <laughs> okay, yeah, that's yeah, a Fastcart yes, question. Um, Are any of us going to answer this? Or no. are we just going to say... Uh, uh, when you say porn, pass. do you mean just showing off the actual visuals? Or do you mean pornography? Oh. Uh, well, you've not I, got the internet, dude. There's loads of porn out there. Yeah. <laughs> I, I have to say, where, where's that bloody face? Um, I'm trying to find the face. <laughs> what are you... What? Uh, this. Um... This, this one. I, I really like this. This, to me, is ridiculous and awesome when it when it shows. Here. That. What? The grin. I love it. I love the grin. I think it's hilarious. Oh. Okay. I like the grin in FOIP. Sorry. Anyway. Um, Desmarius asks, with FOIP, do you foresee a large increase in the use of voice mod programs? Possibly, yeah. Uh, yeah, likely. Uh, Jim, the instance manager, the real one, asks, no. what, what was that? Oh, no. Don't know what you're talking about. Okay. <laughs> uh, what do you think of the video call feature? Actually, that's a good question. The video call in the, the rover of someone else talking with the FOIP in the video rendered to texture, what, like, that's the best. Like, hailing someone with a video call, like Star Trek or something. Love it. Holy crap. Actually, like, I com when I was talking about FOIP earlier, I totally forgot about that. That I love. Absolutely love, 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 love. Yeah. Wicked. I have to disagree with Vince again. I'm sorry. But that's the second best. Because <laughs> the best will be when we get the hologram version of that in 3D. And you're able to do a holo call to oh, someone else. Oh, God. Oh, that's going to be so cool. Oh, when so when cool. can I use this tech to flip oh. someone off? <laughs> Three point one. That's what I want to know. I want to. Well, yeah, when, you're going to struggle uh, because you're going to have your. I see. I see at least. Me. I see at least two CIG people in chat. Uh, when are we going to get full body capture uh, so that we can <laughs> use our hands? Uh, work on that, please. Oh, get back oh, to us. We're going to have to start playing Star Citizen in wetsuits. <laughs> <laughs> what? Shipper. Because it's, it's easier to track. <laughs> Oh right! Oh, you mean like like the um, <laughs> performance capture shoot? The ping pong balls, yeah, yeah. yeah. Ping pong yeah. balls over it. All right, yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh god! I'm down with that. I'm down with um, that. Haramis asks, uh, "Only have mobile internet today? Can you please sum up very shortly your impression from yesterday's stream? One sentence is enough. Uh, let's start with Shiver. Jesus Christ, that was good. Sunjammer. Uh, I. 
if your expectation was something that we got last year, it was a bit disappointing. If your expectation is what we've seen in 2.3, then it was brilliant. Vince? The game looks good. (laughs) (laughs) David? It's tough. It's tough. Yeah. Is that your sentence? One sentence doesn't do it justice. (laughs) No, I am... A man of many words. I'm a man and of yeah, many words, and at this at point, moment. I do not have many words, because I don't know what words to say. I am pleased. I believe that my hype has been slightly restored. I believe that a lot of my f- my my excitement in the project has been restored. I still think the, pro- the presentation could have been a li- little bit better, uh, but that's mainly because I want to see more about what's coming. I want to see updated roadmaps, and I want to see Squadron 42. What I will say is that this presentation has given me all kinds of hype for CitizenCon. Uh, I can't wait to see what they show us next, because if this is what they showed us is Gamescom, and I understand that Gamescom is more for the world, and they want to show the world what's coming to Star Citizen soon. I'm really hoping that at CitizenCon we can see what's coming not soon, and I'm really bloody excited for that. That's a long sentence, but yeah. Run on, I don't it was, care. It was a lot of commas and semicolons, yes. I think. You got yeah. there. Yeah. <laughs> I I don't actually have much much salt right now. My my salt honestly oh, low sodium, baby. To be completely honest, my salt is right now at the lowest point that it has been since uh last year gamescom this is it's at the lowest point in the year i'm happy again i'm really happy again um, oh me too overall yeah like yeah, totes. i'm yeah and and i'm always gonna try and find little things to nitpick because that's kind of what we have to do here we have to ask cig to do you know certain things that we're like oh we need, this, like we need this but i feel like sun jam are the only ones here who can just sit back get a bit relaxed and go when it's ready who cares? I'm excited for it. Just as excited as I was before. It'll happen. It's a marathon, not a sprint. You know, it's yeah. years in the making. Uh, apparently, apparently, they took all my salt for their BBQ in LA. So, um, no, I'm I'm supremely happy with the project right now. I'm really happy that I I really like the burn down. For example, the burn down this week is great. Where they're at 68 bugs, like they got week. through 20. I'm really happy that they're showing us the bug count. And I know a lot of people didn't like it when it came out, but no, that's the kind of information I have always wanted. The what is holding it back? This is it. this is what's holding it back, and this is how many of them there are. Thank you, thank you for that. Do you, I you no, know, really I'm, think we get that from the burn down. I do. Okay. I think I don't care. I don't need to know what every single sixty-eight of them are. We know that there are sixty-eight of them. I'm happy. Yep. I'm, yeah. I'm. I'm pretty happy. It's. It's getting a lot. It's getting a lot easier to run this every week. So thank you, CIG. Wow. Uh, Spaceship Training Wheels says they were teasing Vandal in the ship commercials. Was that cut from the presentation? I don't know if that was cut from the presentation or if that's being held for CitizenCon. Uh, Mm -hmm. I would expect to see some Vandal at CitizenCon. I'm not going to make any predictions or say you will, but that is my expectation and hope. Take that as you will. I'll make a prediction. You will see Chris Roberts at CitizenCon. That's my prediction. I'm not going to go that far. Oh, crap. (laughs) <laughs> you will see one of the Roberts at least. Yes. There will be a Roberts. Um Fastcart asks what was your personal reaction with the Ur- when the Ursa rover was destroyed? Mine was uh shock and curiosity as how did the rest of the presentation would proceed without it. Uh let's start with Shiver and we'll end with Vince. Sure, I was this just is, this was is my reaction. A, <laughs> just glad it was down to a bug and not, you know, like the last time that we're not going to specifically mention deliberately crashing into something accidentally <laughs> Sunjammer? well i think there's there's two things to bear in mind here that would have foretold that exactly that that was going to happen first of all it was melissa driving and we know what her driving is <laughs> like um so i think possibly we need another gofundme page to be set up and uh, and secondly if anyone had been watching the gamescom floor presentation we all know the ramps are op 
They need to be nerfed. They are uh, the by comments. Far the the comments of all personalities on Relay Station are are property of that sole personality and not fully endorsed by Relay. <laughs> <laughs> Ramps kill more people than they save. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. They saved one. They've killed at least two, just in Gamescom alone. And Vince. I thought it was hilarious, and I actually thought it was great. That is exactly the kind of thing I want to see happen, to be honest, at these presentations. Because that, to me, says that they are pushing. They're pushing to show us the absolute newest thing that they can possibly show us. It hasn't been polished. It hasn't been fixed. It hasn't been worked on for 14 months. They're pushing, and it didn't work. And thank you for it not working. <laughs> hey, well, they can not work some other stuff. Simple solution, though, to go back to Mass Effect 1, the only Mass Effect game there is. Um, they need a little bunny hop uh, functionality in the rover like they had in Mass Effect. Well, I, I had a little jet. bit was oh, that rover was only one day away from retirement. <laughs> it taking critical damage. Did you not see the, the big hole in the back? I mean, it was, it was on mm. one health. Uh, so spaceship training wheels asks this or says this is my first time feeling underwhelmed by a Gamescom or CitizenCon presentation. Do you agree? Disagree? Does CIG need to step it up for next CitizenCon? I'm going to take this first. I disagree wholly. I was not underwhelmed. I was sufficiently whelmed. Um, <laughs> I wasn't overwhelmed, but I was. I saw the stuff that I thought that we had to see, and I am pleased by it. And I don't think that they need to step it up. I think that they need to do the same thing. I need to think that they need to go in and tell us. I really, really, really liked, like, three days beforehand, Disco saying we would not see procedural cities. And Aaron saying we will not see Squadron 42. That was great. Tell us what we're not going to see, especially if those are things that the, we're expecting to see. So, no, I'm perfectly happy. I think that they need to do the exact same thing at CitizenCon. The rest of you, I'll be right back. Uh, starting with Vince moving clockwise to Shiver. I was initially kind of underwhelmed, mostly because, you know, the, the acting and all that stuff and, you know, focusing on stuff that isn't 3.0, like, kind of like, ugh. But when I looked at it again and thought about, like, the other stuff they showed us, like, the stuff they didn't focus on, but, like, like we talked about earlier, the details, the quality of life mm. stuff, that's when I started to realize, like, okay, the presentation didn't focus on the right stuff and a lot of beefs with it, whatever, whatever. The game itself looks pretty good. Uh, in the end, I'm not underwhelmed by the progress on the game and where the direction they're taking with it and all that stuff. I think it's in quite good shape. I think it looks real good. There's a lot of great work that's been done. It's just the presentation itself that I got to beef with, but the actual game itself and how I feel about it, good as ever. Some real good stuff in there. Yeah, I, I'd be interested to know why... Um... The person asking the question felt they were underwhelmed by it. Maybe they've said in chat. I don't know. Um, on the whole, I wasn't. I didn't have particularly high expectations. Um, I could understand that if you, like I said before, if you were looking at last year's presentation and expecting more of the same uh, and to be wowed by that or to be wowed in the same way as we were with the, the Pupil to Planet video when that came out, because that obviously at that time that blew us all away, um, then you might be underwhelmed by this this presentation. But I thought it was perfectly good. It, it showed us what we needed to see. It had a couple of nice surprises in there. Come on, an Idris landing on a planet. How can you not be at least whelmed by that? Not not just an Idris landing on a planet, but two Idrises blowing the shit out of each other. Thank you. Yes, thank you. Gladius is flying into yeah. the back and landing, taking out the taking off and going out the front you know yeah. it, I, I, I think there was some good stuff and and uh, as we've said earlier and as vince alluded to there it's uh, there's a lot of small things that we saw that they didn't really focus on i mean we haven't talked about equipment at all no you know and we um, will it's just we've we only got really so much time about, to talk about yeah exactly we haven't really talked about subsumption that much yeah it's, um i mean i made a page i went through it this morning and, and made pages of notes on the stuff and there were there, there were lots of little things in there that we didn't so if you were maybe underwhelmed maybe go back and watch it again you might yeah. be less underwhelmed and maybe just ignore all the chat uh, you know the, the role-playing comments um i thought they were fine but yeah so i was if, the, I if was that's what pissed you satisfied, off satisfied i think is how mute I it and watch the rest of it shiver yeah 
Well, I can understand why someone might feel uh, very underwhelmed or disappointed by it, but it, I saw a lot of progress compared with what they've done. Like I said on um, Replay that we recorded, just because a p average player doesn't see this progress like 64-bit floating point unit, like dust particles being kicked up by yeah. a damn Idra standing on a planet, something like that. It's, you don't you take it for granted, but that is progress. They, they are still putting in these systems that are core to the game, and once they've got those perfected and in, they can then start adding on top of that more and more and more. And because they've got the core features in completed without or at least as bug free as they can, they don't have to come back in like nine months down the line and say, oh fuck, that's totally wrecked. We yeah. have to pull the whole system out, work it again from scratch, because that's what they're doing now. And yes, it's you gonna know take time and you're not gonna see it. You know, but it's one worth of the it. things that, that, that's most impressive that hasn't been like talked about enough is that, and, and it wasn't emphasized enough in the presentation, I think, but that, that like 10 second call in the rover where. On the in, like, so the rover is driving along, and on the in rover screen is not just a pre rendered video playing, it's a video of someone else being on an Idris. That, on an Idris, and it's their video as the FOIP is taking them, and they are responding, and the video in the Ursa is catching their response. That is, that is insane. Like, that is genuinely insane. Yeah, we saw two two ways of calling. So, so we, we saw them doing a comms call from uh, Moby Glass to Moby Glass on an Aquila, and then we saw them doing the rover to yeah. uh, Moby Glass on a um, it, it, on it an is, Idris. It's, yeah, it, which is I can't I cannot overstate how amazing that was. Uh, so Jim, the instance manager, the real one, asks. Uh, so there's been uh, there's been a Countless talk of outposts and their uses. That being said, do any of you desire to have your own? Yes. What can I do with it? Yeah, what can I do with it? Uh, yeah. Own it. I, I I would like to have an org one, not necessarily one myself. I'd be a little scared of having one myself because evil, nasty people would come and kill me and then take it over. But if I had a nice, friendly org I could hang out with, with maybe a nice newsroom in there that I could hide in a bunker, you know, then yeah. yeah. I, um, I feel like once once some of the org uh, options come online, uh, we as Relay will start, you know, opening our org a bit more to people who want to, you know, hang out with Relay and give us news. Especially to people who collect lots of cargo crates lots of people that give us lots yeah. of credits yeah. yeah yeah uh there there will We're be a minimum right. is pay to join there will be a minimum fee to enter um yeah yeah at least a million credits at minimum, least yeah uh <laughs> donation of your firstborn in game and, uh, uh fast cart asks uh and i'd ask our, our cig people not to listen to this one or at least not to tell tell disco but uh during the 30 minute long break in the middle of the presentation how many times did you blame red one <laughs> i'm Gosh. not saying what i said because it was horrible stuff that i said but i didn't mean it it was jokes <laughs> Uh, we love Red One. Red One had nothing to do with that, as far as we know. He might have tripped on a power cord. Who knows? Uh, Jay Han did. Wait, can, before we go, <laughs> it was can totally I just say, Tyler. Look, Paul, Paul Rindell, I think. I, I know you didn't know or say, hear what I said, but I am really genuinely sorry. <laughs> <laughs> um, Jay Han did fool asks uh, in today's bar citizen. Okay, yeah, uh, we read that out in chat. Um, Oh, apparently it was uh, Mr. Pub. Uh, Fastcart asks, do you think CIG will put out a Road to Gamescom 2017 video like they did for CitizenCon? Hopefully no, because the Road to CitizenCon video was all to show how they didn't, uh, didn't, you know, show deliver. us. Yeah, they didn't deliver. Uh, I think they delivered at Gamescom. I don't think they need a yeah. video saying why they didn't deliver because they delivered. And hopefully they will never need a road to anything ever again. Where we're going, we don't need roads. That's a shame because the Germans are working on the road tech right now. It's true. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, that's true. We do need roads. We need don't roads. Listen we, yeah, we want, don't we don't listen to Shiver. We want roads. CIG, we want roads. Presentations. Yeah. Randy Roads. 
<laughs> What's the Osborne reference? Nice. Uh, Randy Jim... Rhodes was the most amazing guitarist. Yeah, Jim... classical stuff was. Jim, the instance manager. Again. Hang on, hang on. Jim, All the instance does is manager. Ask questions. We should rename him. Jim, the question asker. Not there's. He doesn't say the real one. So I think this is not a the real fake. one. It's this fake. is a, this is now a fake. Jim, the instance manager. Okay. Uh, fake. Yeah, it's Jack a fake. The instance manager or something. Uh, so why do you think Chris was so determined that they don't show the loading screen? They got annoyed when it was still on screen. Because it says Unreal Engine 4.0. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. I... Uh, also, Shiver... I think if there was anything... I know, he said he deleted him. <laughs> Sorry, everyone. Yeah, uh, uh, Shiver just caused the road to be deleted, so everyone blame Shiver. It would have been put on Reddit if there was anything controversial or something major that was put on Reddit. So I think it was just, you know, Chris saying, stop loading, we all need to coordinate here, because, you, you know, one guy's like, come on, I'm ready here! I'm ready to get in that Idris! <laughs> uh, could it have been that it was showing an Idris, and at that point we hadn't yet seen the Idris, and he wanted to make sure everyone was surprised oh. by seeing the Idris for the first time? No. no? Be. Because okay. the 600i was leaked before the page was up. Oh, you know, it could also. Who, who cares about that? the six hundred I? I mean, the six hundred I is nice and all, but well, it ain't no that's Idris. That's what I mean. Yeah. Like as soon if the you know six hundred I compared to Idris, six hundred I was straight up on Reddit. But if then again, an why would there, they have a loading screen for three point oh that had an Idris on it? Plus, we also saw the loading screen right. for three point oh on the. Um, show floor a couple yeah. of times and it had a we, rover on it. I think we just straight up don't have an answer for this one. We don't know. I uh, think it said it, it, Paul it clearly said, you know, the government knows about aliens. Yeah. Area 51 is real. Okay. Uh, Jim, the instance manager. Some, yeah. uh, uh, disclaimer about uh, their um, mirror tech and their smoke generators. <laughs> Uh, Jim, Massa the instance manager. Exactly the and and apparently this is actually the real instance manager. Uh, he just gave up writing the real one because he was lazy. Um, says, uh -huh. uh, as cool as the inner thought system is, do you think they'll let us walk up to objects that only have one option and just hit F to use it? For example, entering an Ursa rover seat. You can't do anything before you sit in it, yet they had to hunt for the option. I think they would want to keep that system uniform, like you do the same thing even if there's only one interaction option. Uh, it does seem a little bit on the slow side right now. I think they still have some smoothing out to do. And like there were some cases where like you had to look part at a particular spot of the seat and stuff like that. But that's just minor stuff. But no, I think they should keep it as uniform as possible to avoid confusing people. I think we'll also get fast riding because you'll just hit F. And then return or something like that. I, I'm hoping because that's the default option. Yeah, um, I, I'm hoping that like F to open the the thing when you're looking at it, and then yeah, either enter to hit the default option or F again to select the default option. Um, yeah, because you can control. Uh, like, My like, understanding like, is you can control the options with the mouse wheel. So yeah, which one's selected? You can just scroll through them. Um, I saw that as a that came up as a hint. Um, when they were doing the playthrough, like uh, like like Mr. Sherman says in chat, uh, it's part of the nuance that comes over time with the whole setup of things. And yeah, it's they yeah. they've got to get the interaction radii and, yeah. and location. That is thing. not a cause of concern. It's no. yeah, I'm not. At some point, they're going to change the font. Please, please. No, I, I'm actually okay with. I I like all comic of it. Sans. I'm really excited Com to use it. Star City, just Comic Sans. <laughs> <laughs> it, it's got. They've got to do something to make it pop more. I mean, there have been some threads on Reddit about it, um, I think, some examples of things they could do, you know, outlining or putting a shaded background or something like that. But it, a lot of the time, especially if it's a light-colored object that it's over, it blends. What do you guys think? Yeah. If, sure, you are, if you are dehydrated, so because we now know that food and water are going to be a thing, if you're dehydrated and hungry and, and slightly delirious, should all of the letters be inverted and you not know what Please you're Please, no. Oh my god. Well, at least they don't even like italics. <laughs> like when you played a Malkavian in Vampire the Masquerade. Yeah. God, that was a cool game. That game was that so was cool. was a great game. Never yeah. played it. It's good. Oh, it's the first game that ever came out with the new Source engine. Really? Before Half-Life 2. Yeah. Wow. Mm -hmm. uh, so Rock and Anchor asks, do you think CIG will implement voice recognition to the inner thought options when you chat with NPCs? You could give your NPC crew commands simply by talking to them. Immersion complete. 
I thought about that last night, actually. I was like, because when when they were talking to Miles Eckhart and it was like the I'm interested and it was it was the silent protagonist <laughs> issue that you get in a lot of uh, single player games. And, you know, Miles is chatting away and it's all very cinematic. And you just want to be able to say, I'm interested and for it to pick that option. And we've got, I'm not going to say her name, but we've got young, you know, things that, that, that can pick up on what you're saying quite easily these days. So that tech exists, so yeah, get it in there. It'd be cool. Uh, probably would be clunky, but, I mean, it's an idea. It's an idea. If voice voice chat is going to be this integrated into the game in the first place, and you're, you're ex- kind of expected-ish to be talking anyway, then maybe, maybe. I'd be okay with it. Not yeah. going to lie. As long as there's a, as long as one of the commands is shut up, Wesley. <laughs> mm, yes. uh, so Aldo underscore Brink asks, do you think will there will be racing against NPCs in the PU in the future, either organized races or just against NPC you meet in a bar, etc.? Yes, I do. Uh, Absolutely. Yeah, that's. I don't even think that that's get uh, that swoop yeah. racing in there. That will happen. Yep. Uh, Aldo Brink also asks. Tinkering with our ships sounds like it could be a lot of fun. For example, do you think we'll be able to buy new engines for our ships, thus increasing the SCM and or afterburner speed? What kinds of ship mods do you foresee? Uh, I believe that that's been talked about for a long time as a thing that exists. Uh, You can tune your engines, you can buy new thrusters that have more output but are also louder and take more energy you can modify basically every single part of your ship you can also modify basically every single part of your gun uh mods everywhere you can modify everything uh we're actually still waiting to see for it. one of the, one of the most exciting things sorry one of the things i'm really excited for is when i backed at the freelancer physical package back in 2012 uh, one of the things that was included in that package was a guide to modding in Star Citizen. And somehow I feel like that that's not actually something that they're going to be able to deliver in a physical format anymore. Uh, but I'm excited to see what they do. If anyone from CIG <laughs> wants to weigh in on the status of that... I like the idea that one day you just get this huge manual that's that flat <laughs> thick. <laughs> I don't think this is a good idea now. (laughs) What did I get myself into? Yeah. Hey, Aldo. Thanks for the questions. Um, Oh, God. This is a long one. Okay. (sighs) My glasses are dirty. No, never mind. (sighs) I hate you. Uh, Christians in Space the Musical asks, uh, I like the idea (laughs) of having a client-side option to let your webcam use your actual face in-game FOIP. But since the Moby Glass screens are rendered in real time for everyone to see, um, for everyone to see what's on the person's screen, you risk actually seeing into some spaceman watching dicks on a hologram screen on his arm. Then it happens. Then realization hits. Actual space penis. What uh, kind of penis have you seen? It looked like someone's well, face. I don't know uh, the actual webcam feed. It's just a, transmitting a bunch of points and the software detects on your face. So hopefully that's not a thing we have to worry about, right? I hope so. If yeah. Facebook right, guys? software picks up your genitals <laughs> as a face, there's something wrong there. Uh, no, you know what? Oh, boy. Were you playing the game? If you, What are you... What, what, this makes no don't sense Don't think about me. it. For, I don't, ever, I don't know where the clip yeah, is. Be, I don't know where the clip question. is, but in... What no, no, hang on. I don't know where the clip is, but in... We've broken Shiver. Uh, in in what we saw yesterday, you can actually... There's a point where they're selecting the destination for the constellation. And the pilot is sitting in their Connie alone, looking at their Moby Glass. And you, behind the pilot, can see on their Moby Glass the star map. And them selecting the area they want to go on the star map. Then that area appears on the ship HUD, and then they go. That is actually amazing. That what he's sitting there and doing and looking at in his menus in real time to him is also displayed in real time to you behind him looking at him. So you could be sitting there in a bar or like at a a, uh, job board 
and you've got someone opening their Moby glass, looking at, oh, where is it that I have to go for this mission? Oh, I have to go here? Okay. And you've been watching them look at that and be like, ah, I recognize that planet. I think I should yeah. meet you on the way, sir. <laughs> you know, evil laugh and such, but that's, that's fucking fantastic. Do you take the Moby glass off when you get in the shower? Yes. Mm. Ah. Mm. So it's not a waterproof thing then. Oh, well, it must waterproof. be. Come on. Oh, yeah, it's totally waterproof. waterproof. But, you know, when else are you going to wash mine your in my hot tub then? Um, I I think uh, depending on how that is, and and how much of an issue it becomes, we may see privacy screens or upgrades for our Moby Glass at some point. You know, uh, because yeah, you, at the moment you you can see it's it's fully diegetic, so you can obviously you, we we saw them when Melissa was buying the railgun, we saw that when they were getting the mission, you know, people could see that. So, so uh, spaceship training wheels says that there's some answers now for the question box. When are you going to be updating it? Uh, that's probably going to be on the schedule for the next week or so, looking at the the question box, figuring out what's been asked, what's been answered, figuring out where all... It, it, there's a lot of work to it. But if you see a question on the question box that you think has been answered and you think you know where it was answered, send us a message, either on Twitter, on Discord, uh, send us an email, tell us what what's the question email is. What's address? Uh, uh, staff at relay.sc. Staff at relay.sc. Send us what the one that you think is answered, and we'll fill it in, and we'll you know put in the link to where it was answered because uh, we've got a lot of stuff going on actually right now. Um, Fastcart asks, uh, "How shiny is the 600i? I think it's really shiny, exceptionally well, shiny. I'm Very shiny, except where it's Matt. Who's Matt?" What, what, Matt Sherman? Matt Stop Sherman? bringing Matt into this. <laughs> you know, if Matt is nice enough to come here and spend his time talking to us in chat. We shouldn't be referring to him all the time. Uh, it's it's terrible. Uh, we're, we're sorry, Matt. Matthew McConaughey? Um, uh, Spaceship Training Wheels asks the final question on my list of questions here. Uh, when repair and all ship systems are implemented, how long would you like a full Idris versus Idris battle to last? 15 minutes. No. Yeah. Do Depending you, on whether it. or not you can get a critical hit inside of something that's going to cause a chain reaction, you know? If, if it, it's got to last possible. long enough that you're getting to the stage where you can send people down to a ruined component to replace it. So it can't be over in just a matter of a minute or two. Honestly, you're gonna have you like, also still need yeah. to get people to the escape pods as well when you know you're doomed. 15 I, minutes, it should be a big deal, Idris versus Idris. Yeah. Like, I it mean, can't just be over like that, exactly. Like 15 uh, minutes or maybe more, I have no idea, but like, it's gotta I, be lengthy, it's I gotta want, be something. I want, anywhere Half from, a day. I want anywhere from 5 to 30. Yeah. Like, if we look at the breach in the hull that happened... In, yeah, in yesterday's demonstration, I mean, if if an Idris hits another Idris broadside with its railgun, yeah, no, I mean that that should be over. Yeah, but that the chances of that happening should be small. So yeah, you get that critical hit, boom, um, and then you get the cascading effects from it. But um, I don't want there to be enough. like I don't want there to be like a oh Idris fights should take fifteen minutes. That is what we're going to balance for. No. If if something yeah if if someone critical hits, hello oh a hi. small alien uh, appears. Hi, uh, <laughs> I'm getting a hug. Sorry everyone. Um, I mean yeah, if you know exactly where the the, the engine or the batteries oh. on the ship are, and you happen to like pinpoint accuracy, a... nail that with your railgun. I want it to be over. Like I want what if that it's nuclear ship powered. <laughs> I don't know. I if if there's two people who keep missing and it becomes a battle of the ships versus the ships, not so much the Idris versus the Idris, then you know half an hour. If it's an Idris versus, it, it I don't want there to be a set time. Um, yeah, I'm being. I don't. I don't think that's what we're saying. Though. I mean, we're just looking at a, sort of an average time to kill. 
because you, you hmm. do want it. Um, I, I agree that there should be critical Wait. shots, but they've they've talked about that in the past and always said that they um, they were going to implement um, so that the accuracy of the shooting. So if you could see, wave to her, you miserable so and sos. Jesus. <laughs> Um, so if you oh, could, sorry about that man is more human opponent you would be able to damage it um, so they've talked about that for all ships yeah uh, but do you want the Idris to explode in five minutes or do you just want it to be disabled in five minutes uh, or uh, again, you know, instantly uh, it depends on where it gets hit what they hit I, I don't I don't want to say oh no an Idris has to last five minutes no matter what you know what if an Idris gets hit right through the command deck on shot one, like two Idris see each other. They're coming towards each other. This one gets a lucky shot right through the command deck. The 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 I, the deck, the bridge like is gone. Survive. The bridge is gone. I want gone. people to survive in that scenario in little crevices or little sections I, I of want, ship that have been blown off. I want to find survivors and things I don't like that. Want it, people that are okay, strike yes. to survive. I don't want it to be like a uh, battlefield whatever uh four i think where you're in a you're in a building and the building hits its x damage point to the point where oh the building is now collapsing and the instant it starts collapsing anyone inside it is dead i don't want that to happen i, I you should be able to survive if the if the bridge of an idris gets taken out and you're hiding in the bowels as an engineer and nothing comes near you you should be fine that idris is dead it's dead in the water it's not gonna do jack shit because well, i mean like its bridge is gone you should be but, physically fine but totally screwed in many ways oh totally screwed but you should still be able to even get into a gladius in the flight deck and fly out and run away like it's I, I don't think we can only just if say, you can manually override the front doors yeah but <laughs> there there should be something in there for that of a it, they hit it in one hit like it, it should it should take as long as it takes <laughs> and it should be completely based on the actual components that are hit in my opinion yeah hmm. and i think there should be a big in between from an interest being fully operational and combat ready to while being completely destroyed like i think there should be lots of different states of the ship being disabled in many ways yeah. and like having its engines knocked out and life support subsystems yeah i don't just want i mean the explosion like, like was matt really sherman cool, says but... how the engagement starts is going to drive it a huge amount whoever gets that first shot whoever has the best situational awareness that has to matter and i i agree that 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 is the most important thing well, these battles will probably take place over like quite long distances, right? Yeah. So landing a hit with a railgun should be exceptionally difficult. I mean, they Assuming, started. You know, both pilots are skilled and all they that. They started like, they should pretty both be close together, and they yeah, started were a couple facing each other, right? Or something, they? That's oh, not yeah. how it's going to happen most of the time. So yeah, I, yeah, I also only, don't only a few ship lengths apart. Yeah. So that is actually all of. Oh wait, no, one more, Zoldus. Gets the last question of the day. Um, it better be about equipment. Zoldus says, uh, speaking of killing the bridge, isn't it quite stupid to have the command bridge on the outside of the ship instead of it being in the middle of the ship? Well, the middle of the Idris is actually a hangar. So, no. I'm actually okay with I it. I saw this documentary once. There were these sort of triangular ships, and they dominated this galaxy a long, long time ago, far, far away. And they put all their bridges raised in the middle of the fucking triangle. And you think, that's just a great big hit me sign. Rule of cool. Uh, I'll, I'll forgive it because it's cool. I will forgive it if there's a secret procedure in the Idris where the bridge actually takes off and the bridge goes on to become this giant combat thing and the rest of the ship goes home because it's for all the civilians. Wait, that that's Star Trek! <laughs> yes! Thank you! That's the source no. of separation on the Enterprise D! Yes! Yeah, Why, I shouldn't have admitted need that. Need the combat bridge. <laughs> that was the bridge. joke! God! It wasn't a joke. It was oh! Not. Hey. Star Trek is nice oh! to some of us, Eris. <sighs> All right there, buddy? Yeah, I'm good. 
Before I was, I little... was, I was concerned about your heart attack. But after that joke, after that re- remark, <laughs> I should say this. Not so much, yeah. Oh, okay. That's car before you. That officially is it for us at the relay station for today. Um, Talk about commitment next week. Uh, for all of you out there, thank you for watching. Thank you for listening, and thank you to try and live your lives as close to the ideal that Star Trek portrays for all of us. You should all be your own Jean-Luc Picards. We'll see you in the Can verse. I just say, come to Dead Air this week. It's the last one for a month. It's going to be damn heavy. Yeah, go to Dead Air. Uh, yeah. Goodbye. Bye. Bye. <laughs>